What's going on everyone? My name is Nicholas Merton here at Data Dash and today is October 25th of 2018. Well, folks, I hope you all are having a great day wherever you are. Today, I want to spend a little bit of time to talk to you all about U.S. equities and predominantly about the bloodbath that we've seen in U.S. stocks over the past month of October and what it means for the broader term picture. So if you guys happen to follow me on Twitter, I put a tweet out yesterday talking about the NASDAQ predominantly, and I focused in on the fact that the NASDAQ has gone down 12.15% for this month alone in October and that it has been the largest percentage drop, not the largest point drop in the indice, the largest percentage drop that we have seen since back all the way 10 years ago in October of 2008. And this holds a lot of ramifications, but I want to be fair. I mean, if it was just the NASDAQ that was down this much, it would uh, be understandable and it wouldn't be such a big fear indicator because the NASDAQ is full of a bunch of tech stocks, thousands of tech stocks that are a little more high risk and provide higher reward as we've seen comparative to the S&P 500 and the Dow Jones. But I think I didn't emphasize on my tweet, and I think it's important to state that not only is the NASDAQ having its worst month since that month in October of 2008, but the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and even less known indices like the Russell 2000 are experiencing their worst month on record. Now, we still have uh, about four trading days to go before we close out this month, so there could be some change. Uh, we're up a little bit pre-market uh, in regards to stocks. We'll see how the day goes. I think actually the market's open now, so we'll get to take a look at the um, major indices in the stock market, how it's bouncing around today. But generally speaking, we are definitely in quite red territory. And as we take a look at the chart here, guys, and I'll go full screen, I mean, we don't even need to do any crazy TA. I just want to spend some time to talk to you guys and ask you, what does this chart say to you? When you see a 12% drop like this. Now, of course, we could recover. There's a, there's a, uh, a few different things to consider. And we'll talk about that. But I just want you to spend some time. You don't even have to be a market analyst. Look at this chart. And, you know, applying even simple principles of buying low, selling high, um, you know, really making sure that when you're investing, uh, if you're going to be following the trend, that the trend is staying strong. What does this chart tell you? Well, I don't want to be biased here, guys, because I'm not that doomsday guy who says that everything's going to crash tomorrow to zero and that the the all the all the markets rigged and you know that you know everything's just going to go to zero. Get your guns ready. It's doomsday tomorrow. I'm not trying to build that narrative. Okay, I'm not trying to shock you guys. If you watch my channel, you guys know I try to keep things fair, rational, and balanced, which is hard to find. I think in finance nowadays, because obviously when you've got your money involved in things, you're going to be very emotional and you're going to be very, uh, I think, one-sided in many cases. But as a good trader, you cannot be one-sided. You you have to look at things in both regards. And this is the first year that I've actually been bearish on equities. And to be fair, even though equities were quite up this year, and I think most indices are still up a few percentage points from the uh, beginning of the year, no matter if they are or aren't, the markets are pretty flat for 2018. We've cut out within one month, let, let that bear in mind, one month we have cut out practically all the gains of this year. And that's a very similar sign to another time period in history, and that is the dot-com era. Now, I don't want to say that we're in the same environment as we were during the dot-com era. A lot of tech companies are still way more profitable uh, than where they were back in 2000. Uh, there's, there's much more rationality, I think. But when we take a look, actually, at the P-E ratios of these companies, the valuations have obviously gone higher than the dot-com era, obviously, in regards to the, the equity value. And it's important to understand that the price-to-earnings ratio, the price paid per share for the earnings you receive for holding a said share uh, are at the same levels we saw during the dot-com era. And that needs to you know, set us back for a moment here because markets are not in the risk-on narrative that they used to be. Rates are rising. Quantitative easing is turning into quantitative tightening, basically instead of the Fed taking on assets to its balance sheet and injecting capital into the economy by purchasing those assets, it is reversing it. It is dumping U.S. Treasuries. It is starting to dump the mortgage-backed securities that it picked up to save uh, a lot of the chaos from what was going to be the full swing of the financial crisis. Um, because of that, we're starting to reverse those things that kept up the market. So fundamentals do play a lot more in a market where we're not living in la-la land, where the punch bowl isn't full, and we're not partying. So 
That's why a drop like this really sends shockwaves. When we see a short period of time where stock buybacks can't uh, be utilized by the majority of companies in the S&P 500, and this happens in one month, that's concerning. So again, I, I, I've got a decent amount of fundamental reason to be a little bit concerned, but I'm still going to try to keep a neutral mindset. Do I believe this is going to be 2008 and everything's just going to crash and it's going to be like the, the dot-com bubble where we have an 80% correction? No, I don't believe that yet. There's a few reasons for that. So uh, the big reason here, I don't want to stay too much on this slide here. Uh, I'll get my rambling out of the way. U.S. markets are much stronger comparative to emerging markets right now. There's a crisis in emerging markets. I'm still working on the video, guys. As, as always, you know, I'm working vigilantly to make content for you guys. Um, there's a mixture of debt crises, currency crises, geopolitical issues all throughout um, throughout a variety of emerging markets in different geographical locations in the world. And because of that, plus a lot of other factors that come into play, which we'll talk about in that video, money is flowing to the United States, okay? It's coming to the United States. There's a lot of foreign investment in the United States than there was back over the past few years. But that does not mean it is enough to keep equities at these valuations. If people aren't buying at these prices like hedge funds haven't, the only thing that's been propping up this market is stock buybacks. And if that isn't enough to provide against the sell side demand, then we are going to see a drop in equities, okay? So I, I want to go ahead. We'll run through some of these indices here. I'll kind of talk about, you know, what I'm, what I'm planning for here and what I'm watching. Uh, I, I really do believe that on some of these higher risk indices like the NASDAQ and also the Russell 2000, which are full of a bunch of small caps, um, I think that you could very well see uh, some sort of initial correction over the next few months going in to 2019. And with that, uh, you know, seeing about a 30% drop in the market here on the NASDAQ back down to really the last support level. If we breach 7,000 here on the NASDAQ, uh, it's, it's most likely going to come down back to the resistance point back in 2015, where we had our real first sharp correction since back in 2011. So uh, that's what I'm looking for at the NASDAQ. And then I'm going to be looking again for a period of I get a rebound in price, holding there for three months. Again, people think, oh, obviously, we've had the correction. The market gets more confident, and then it starts to roll over again. And we break not only this level here, uh, a little bit above 5,000 on the NASDAQ, but also we break through this line of what turned as resistance into support. And when you have that break, I think you're going to get the full swing correction uh, down below towards a near previous support line, but really, again, something that has turned from resistance to support over time, a descending support line, back down to 4,000, which would be a 50% correction for the NASDAQ. Not doomsday-ish, still way above where we were back in 2008. Um, and it would be a really good basis point for markets to move higher in the long term. And this is something, again, that it's, it's not going to happen. If you notice how I have this written out here, uh, it's, a, it's a very broad prediction. But my, my one thing that I'm confident about is the fact that this is going to go in to the next two or three years. This is not going to be a correction like 2008 where it's sharp, it's dramatic, you can really feel it. The, the oomph of the downturn, this is really going to be something that's going to take time. And I don't know. I don't have a magic wand. Again, this is a broad prediction. But this is how things are tended to play out, uh, that you get a pickup in the sell-off afterwards after you've had this kind of period where markets try to test and they can't hold. And I think the NASDAQ is very well set up for this. Um, going on here to the S&P 500, again, when we take a look in the past here, we see that it's very common for the S&P 500, at least the past two major cycles, have had more than 50% retracements. I think you could very well see the S&P 500 come down to make this previous resistance support. I was talking about this. I had thought about it theoretically uh, when we were having the 2015 pullback. Uh, excuse me. Yeah, the 2015 pullback in August. But I, I thought to myself back then, I was like, well, one, the, the rules haven't changed. Interest rates were still low. Quantitative easing was still going. And along with that, it wouldn't provide for a good 50% pullback, right? You know, it'd be pulling back from a, a little bit above the 2,000 point mark on the S&P 500. If you do the simple math, it's not a 50% correction. But we got very close here to a big even, 3,000 on the S&P 500. Sure, we didn't get to the top, but that lets us pretty much calculate anywhere from around a 45 to 50% correction down to these lows. And that's very decent. That is fair to see. And that's something as well, again, 
where we can test this line of support. If we can't hold it, it gives us the room to make that correction. And again, it's it's gonna be healthy for the broader term of markets, guys. I, I'm, I'm not excessively bearish on equities. If we get down to some of these cheaper levels, I'm definitely gonna be acquiring some equities. And I'll, I, as I mentioned on my tweet a few days ago, or about a week ago, on my trading strategy for 2019, there will be some equity positions I pick up, but it's gonna be a, a lot of hedging positions that do well during bear markets. Um, you know, and things that are oversold right now and generally tied to commodity markets in this case. So again, just trying to be fair here. Uh, we'll have to see in the broad term things again, wider prediction and the Dow Jones, probably the, the least bearish of all of them because the Dow Jones has made high uh, less gains than most of the indices. I feel that what was previous resistance for the past few years is going to become support. And I think that we're going to have plenty of time to make a correction downwards to this support line. And it's going to hold generally around the 2015 levels as I've, I've called for in regards to the NASDAQ. So in this case, 32% correction. Uh, again, very conservative compared to the 39, nearly 40% and 54% correction of 2008 that we've seen in the past. So yeah, I think I'm being quite neutral here. I think these are quite justifiable. And again, it doesn't mean that it's going to be 2008. 2008 was very similar to the Great Depression in the sense that it's a 70, something that you see about every 70, 80 years. It's a macro uh, or super cycle, as many people call it. They come up with all these fancy terms in finance that sound cool. But uh, long story short, this is just going to be a, in my opinion, as Ray DeLeo and a lot of other people have talked about, a grinding downtrend in global markets and the u.s is going to feel the pain but i gotta tell you guys the reason why i'm not screaming recession here in the united states is because i'm feeling much more worried about emerging markets i'm feeling worried about china you guys might not already know this but if you take a look at the shanghai composite um you know one of the major indices in china the shanghai composite's been on a bear market since really 2015. I mean, we had a little bit of a, a drawn out rebound here from 2016 to 20, uh, 2018. But the downtrend, bear in mind, has continued. And we have not tested anywhere near the highs that we saw back in 2007. And I don't, I don't really think we ever will see that in China, because that was a very parabolic and euphoric time period where China was industrializing. But again, over the past few months, China's already you know, marked off a ton of uh, its, its gains over the past few years since 2008. And it looks like it's very well set to go back down towards this level here at 2,000, 2000 points on the Shanghai Composite. And they're not the only ones. They're not the only ones. Take a look at the FTSE, for example. Look at uh, the, the UK index here. Again, starting to see uh, you know, a, a correction in price to testing towards some serious levels here. Um, there's also as well, I mean, we can we can look across the board, uh, the broader term markets, guys. You can look at specific European indexes, like, for example, the FTSE 100. Uh, you can look at what's going on in Japan, uh, what's going on in, I'm trying to think of a list off all the countries. South Korea as well has entered recession tourism as of recent. We've been talking about the currency crises. I don't want to look through too much data. I don't want to overwhelm it because I know most of you are going to be focusing in on U.S. markets. Uh, Russell 2000, this is another one. I think uh, the Russell's probably going to come back down to this line, which has been a resistance, attempt to make it a support, and then it's going to probably come back down, make a little bit over a 50% correction. We've seen that in the past. Over here, went from 860 down all the way to 330. So very, very likely to see that uh, you know happen in this market. Again, make previous resistance support. It's healthy for the long-term market. We almost did that back here, but we didn't get it. So again, I think very reasonable viewpoint. Um, and I also want to talk about the home builders as well. Home builders have still continued to deplete here in the month of October after already going into quite a bearish trend. And I think you're going to see this anywhere, go anywhere from around the 12 to 14, uh, 12 to 14 point range on the index. It's important to note though, that that's not too crazy to call that. I know a lot of people will be like, Nick, you think home builders are going to go down 50% in total? How could you say such a thing? Uh, I don't even have to compare uh, the worst part of 2018, which is, or excuse me, 2006 through 2008 for the housing uh, market. I can literally just take this chart here from $12 down to 520 around the, the lower $5 range and see that this index can have very wide swings because the housing market is either going to be in a very optimistic tone or a very negative one when it comes to home builders because they're taking a lot of risk. Uh, home building can be a very profitable business, uh, but it can also become very uh, negative when demand in the market starts to really switch, when rates go up too fast, uh, when people are less confident as buyers on the market. So again, you know, this I think these are quite reasonable views to see that we've got a little bit of a ways to go at least, at least here for the next month or two. 
I'm not going to be touching equities. I'm not excited to enter into this market. And the narrative that has been going on for the past few years uh, across the board has been uh, BTFD. Uh, and, and to put it lightly, it's, it's buy the fucking dip. That's what it means. <laughs> and to be fair, we're well below uh, the line of support that the NASDAQ and major indices have held. Plus, we're well below the 200 day. The narrative is changing, guys. You can see, I mean, we've bounced up here, but it looks like the market is rolling back over. We'll have to see. I mean, maybe we'll check the cues here. I think it has a little bit more up-to-date price session. Okay, so it's made a little bit of rebound. That's why I wanted to make sure to check the cues. But we'll see what happens here. I'm, I'm not trying to get you guys too nervous, but to keep an eye on the data, to keep focused, and understand that, again, if this doesn't regain some of its losses, if the major indices do not get back above their 200-day, we are in probably for a much longer-term downtrend, especially if the fundamentals keep in check with rates rising, with quantitative tightening coming in, and stock buybacks really being the only thing buying stocks at these levels. Again, it's something we have to factor in on the positive side, but if they can't keep up, the buyers can't keep up. If the buyers can't keep up, prices go down. It's as simple as that. It's supply and demand. Anyways, guys, that's it for the video. Sorry for my rambling. I thought I'd provide some macro perspective for you guys. I've gotten a lot of comments and questions as a recent. And for those of you who do like this kind of stuff, who want to keep active and want to get the extra details that I can't fit into even my 20, 30 minute videos, uh, we definitely have the newsletter coming in soon. So if you guys are interested in that, if you guys want that little bit of extra information, maybe you trade a decent amount of capital inside equity markets or crypto or Forex or commodities, we're going to be covering all of that in the newsletter. So there's a form down below. If you guys are interested, you guys can fill it out and keep in touch in regards to updates on that. So anyways, that's it for the video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Stay tuned.